Welcome back. We're going to be building our trigger checklist, but first let's dig into what exactly a trigger is. So a trigger is a strong, oftentimes negative reaction to external stimuli. Okay. This is the cause of attachment when we're one with the world of the senses and we're really tied to what we're seeing, feeling, hearing, experiencing in the third dimension. That's when we get triggered because it may not be reflecting our inner state or that is it may not be reflecting the fulfillment of our desire. That's why so many people get triggered when they feel like I'm imagining every single night, but my world seems to be going against me. Now, this may happen because you are getting through old programming first. You're having to undo these old beliefs that are aligned with the idea that you can't have whatever it is. Oftentimes there are things that we desire and we have a lot of old programming saying that either it's hard to get that, it's impossible, the science, the reasoning, the rationale are all completely against you. So we have to allow ourselves to not react to this external stimuli that appears, not actually, but appears to deny the fulfillment of our desire. That way we can respond, okay? We are choosing to respond and not react because your reactions are all monitored by the subconscious mind. You can tell by observing, not identifying with, but observing your reactions to life, what your real inner state, your state of consciousness or your state of vibration is. So if you're manifesting wealth and you see that a charge went through on your bank account and maybe it's more than you expected, instead of reacting with fear, reacting with all those negative programmings inside of the subconscious mind about what that means for you, you respond and you say, all is well and good. I have infinite abundance. I am one with consciousness, which is infinite and there is no limit. You don't have to necessarily affirm that, but you can choose to be detached and non-reactive instead of letting yourself worry, fear, have doubt or impatience about whatever it is that you're desiring. This all ties into your past programming. That is the reason why we get triggered because you have within you that fear, doubt, impatience, worry. Those four things are going to come up all throughout this because they are the biggest blocks to your manifestation. These are coming from your past programming. Maybe in the past you've had trouble paying bills. Maybe in the past you've had trouble having the love that you want or maintaining a wonderful relationship. Maybe you've had trouble with whatever it is that you're desiring. So that old programming, those past experiences are going to come up. You're going to have to face them so you can rewrite that programming by responding instead of reacting. This is where a lot of people talk about the universe testing you. I think that kind of has a negative implication in its meaning or connotation. So instead of looking at it like a test, just look at it as a natural part of the process that what is in must appear without for you to handle it. And that way you can put yourself back in alignment with the state of fulfillment, the vibration of fulfillment, and allow yourself to rest and relax, right? Relaxation is key to fulfillment so that it is the opposite of worrying, doubting, fearing, and being impatient. Because if you're manifesting something, maybe you notice when you have no skin in the game and you're manifesting for another person or you're manifesting something you don't care much about like a cup of coffee, there is no difference between manifesting that cup of coffee and manifesting a million dollars. The difference is the attachments. So the attachments, whether they're beliefs or fears or worries, whatever they are, you're going to have to deal with that. And so that's what causes the problem. It's not that you're incapable. It's not that you have to do a bunch of work or that the appointed divine timing of your desired fulfillment is way out in the future and you have to wait forever. No, it is coming down to, can you relax about it? Can you forget about it? Oftentimes it is best for us to completely forget about our desire, which is difficult if you continue to get triggered. And so that is why this checklist is going to help you. Now let's dig into what to do when triggered. First step, okay, you can use any of these practices in any order that you want, but the first step should always be breathe, okay? You wanna take deep breaths. A lot of times when we're triggered, we're in a fear, fight or flight state, and we end up breathing very shallow, maybe just in the chest, not getting any air in the diaphragm. Diaphragm is the area of the solar plexus, okay? That is a focus point of our power. So if we're not breathing energy, right, breath of life, if you're not breathing into the diaphragm and the solar plexus, then you're operating in a state of fear, okay? And you want to 
breathe. Feel it fill up, not from just your stomach, but stomach all the way to chest, and then exhale coming out of the chest and out of the stomach, okay? You create this flow, filling up and exiting out, filling up and breathing out, okay? It helps to breathe in through the nose and maybe out through the nose and mouth like this. And it also helps to slow the heart rate down and relax you if you make your out breath longer than the in breath, okay? So that is one of the most powerful things. It can be longer by one second, longer by 10 seconds, but if you breathe in and then breathe out slightly longer or longer, then it will be such a wonderful help to slow your heart rate and help you relax. So you can visit the meditation section when it's time to get there, but that will be a part of this. I'll be teaching you how to breathe, how to manifest, through a process of relaxation and meditation. Now breathing, you may underestimate it. A lot of people do. They don't understand the power that breathing has to detach us from our reactions, okay? You wanna become the observer, right? The biggest problem we have is we are identifying with these thoughts that come up when we're triggered. We get triggered and we think, oh no, what's going to happen? How can I do this? I'm scared. That's really what it comes down to. You're scared or worried or doubtful. Again, those four biggest blocks. So you want to disidentify because as long as you're identifying with those aspects of attachment, right, with those four biggest blocks, then you're saying I am to them, right? And I am is the name of God forever and forever as he told Moses in the Bible. So when you say I am to anything, when you're identifying with these thoughts, you're saying I am fearful, I am worried, I am doubtful. And that is not in alignment with the fulfillment of your desire. And there is no argument against that. It's absolutely true. If you had your desire, you could relax, you could feel relieved, you could even feel joyful, but it's not necessary. Relaxation is probably the biggest point. And when you're relaxed, you're not taking shallow breaths. You're taking nice, deep breaths into the diaphragm and relaxing not only the body, but the mind. And the body and the mind work together, okay? If you can relax the body, you can relax the mind. And if you can relax the mind, you can relax the body. And the breath, focusing on your breath, taking full deep breaths helps with both. So just to give you an example, you may be worried about the money. I gave that example before, maybe too big of a charge came through or you didn't expect the tip to come out later that you paid at the restaurant and you have less money than you thought you want to be able to breathe through it because although it appears like a problem, you're probably focusing on all these fears, maybe a fear of overdrafting, a fear of not having enough for your next bill. All of this is going to play into feeling triggered, okay? So you want to breathe through it. Just detach from those thoughts, recognize that the 3D reality is not real, okay? 3D is dead, the reality is within. So you want to maintain within a feeling of relaxation because that implies that everything is well, everything is perfect, and that's what will catch up and become reflected in your world. But breathe through it, breathe through it so you can detach from those thoughts and not manifest a perpetuation, right? A continuity of that negativity or negative experience. And you may also get triggered by a specific person. Maybe they're not acting how you desire them to or they're ghosting you or whatever it is that's going on that makes you react and think it's all a wash, it's not going to work out, you're activating the fear, doubt, mistrust. So you want to be able to breathe through that. Although it appears like they're ghosting you, everything is working in favor of your desire. Everything is working to fulfill your desires. So allow yourself to detach from the thoughts, detach from the realm of the senses, which is telling you it can't be, and allow yourself to relax. Use the breath, drop the thoughts, let go, let go, let go, and go back to the breath. Again, we'll cover this in the meditation practice. Next, I wanna talk about decoupling, okay? So it is super important to realize that you don't want that thing, you want how it makes you feel. I'm gonna say that again. You don't want that thing, it could be the dollars, the person, the job, but you want how the dollars, the person, the job can make you feel, okay? But the secret is, you can feel that feeling that you're after before it comes true physically. You can feel that without the idea of what you think you desire, okay? So this is conscious decoupling. So in that state of meditation, in the zero point, in the silence as Neville Goddard called it, in meditation, you want to first, you can start with feeling as you would if you had that thing now. And then once you access that feeling, drop the idea of the dollars or the person or the job, whatever it is, and amplify that feeling on its own. That is decoupling because you're not going to be focused on that thing which is outer based, you're focused on the feeling, which is inner based. You want to stay 
inwardly based because inside is the reality of imagination, the reality of consciousness, the reality of God, the universe self. It is within. Be consciously decoupling, okay? This way you will not get so triggered. You're going to look at what's going on and how it's making you feel and you can decouple your feeling from what's triggering you. That also works, okay? So right now you're looking at the bank account, maybe that's triggering you. And so you can decouple that feeling of fear, negativity, whatever it is, and then release it. You can recognize that it's not serving you. Maybe you feel it in the body. You don't wanna force down or resist any feelings because what we resist persists, but you decouple it so you can be indifferent to the physical aspect and then just work on the feeling. So you don't have to force yourself to feel positive, but just try and meditate, come into the zero point, use the breath again, decouple that feeling of negativity from what's going on. And that way you find that tranquility, you find that relaxation. And again, that works for if you're being ghosted or if the job said no to you, the interview you wanted, whatever it is, you decouple those feelings from the experience and stop identifying with them and allow yourself to come just to a still point. Don't try and force, okay? No force, no effort, all right? Law of reverse effort says that the path of least resistance is how to manifest your desires. So don't force yourself to feel, yay, everything's perfect if you're being triggered because it's gonna throw you right back down. It's like a slingshot, right? If you're feeling negative and you try and pull yourself up, forcing into positivity, when you let go, you may shoot right back down once you exit your meditation or you go back into the world of the senses. So no force, but just try to relax by decoupling. Now, another wonderful thing to do if you're feeling triggered is recognize what the block is and just find one way to think around it, okay? So it doesn't have to be the exact way that things will play out. You don't have to attach yourself to thinking around the block and saying, this is exactly what has to happen, but it's just to open your mind to greater possibilities. Right now you may think, okay, my income is stuck where it's at because the job I have does not offer anything higher. There's no higher position than what I have, just as an example. So you can think around this by saying, maybe the model will change. Maybe there will be a new position that you can be promoted into. Structure changes happen all the time in business and it can happen to benefit you. Doesn't mean that's how it has to happen, but by allowing yourself to open your mind to the possibility, you can increase your income. Then you're going to feel much more relaxed. Then you're going to allow your mind to believe that it's possible. Because as long as you're stuck on that block of there's no way to make more money, you won't be able to because your belief is your limit, right? You want to allow yourself to at least believe in the possibility of something greater. And it could be anything. You could think around it a million ways, but you only need one to get past that block. Because these manifestation blocks are what make our manifestations seem impossible to us. Some people want to manifest physical changes, but they're so caught up in the science, right? They're very, very much believing in the world of the sciences. And if you go quantum, then science doesn't really make sense anymore. But everyone's looking at the science that says you can't grow taller past a certain age. You can't change physical features because of your genetics. All of these things, they are just blocks. So you have to find a way to think around that. And one way to think around those specific blocks would be everything is made up of energy or consciousness vibrating at different rates. And based on the rate at which it's vibrating, that determines the appearance. So if you can change the energy within yourself, then you can change your world, no matter what it is. It could be your height or your physical appearance. It could be your income. It could be your relationship. It's all in alignment. So all you have to do is come up with one way to think around it and open your mind to the possibility. So think around your block. Next up is tell a new story, okay?